The Mac Mini M4, one of the best value machines of 2024. Whether you're cranking out work, editing videos, or just having fun, this little powerhouse is punching way above its weight. So what if I told you that you could unlock the vast world of game console emulation on your Mac? Nintendo Classics, check. PlayStation, oh yes. Xbox, even that. In today's video, we're diving into the current state of Mac game emulation. Everything from retro goodness to cutting edge projects like the shiny new Xenia for Xbox 360, Simi's new metal back end for Wii U, new successor emulator projects for 3DS and the Switch, and yes, we now even have PlayStation 4 emulation on the Mac with shared PS4. It's a whole new level of fun for Apple Silicon. But picture this, you've just spent hours downloading the perfect emulator setup and configuring everything, only to realize you accidentally deleted your BIOS file, or worse, your carefully saved projects or precious photos disappear into the void. No matter how tech savvy you are, when a file's gone, it feels like game over. But thankfully, Wondershare will cover it is here to hit continue. This powerful recovery software can dig deep into your drives, whether it's an SSD, SD, SD card, hard drive, or even a NAS, and get back what you thought was lost for good. With Recoverit, the process is super simple and it works fantastically as a natively optimized Apple Silicon Mac application. And it even works great on Mac formatted drives. Just choose the type of file you need, whether it's a video or a spreadsheet, or even a precious save game, and let its advanced scanning technology do its magic. In minutes, you'll have your files back stress free. See, that's the power of Recover It, trusted by over 100 million users, backed by 20 years of data recovery expertise, and compatible with your Mac or any other device. So whether you're recovering a lost game or something a lot more serious, Recover It has your back. So don't let lost files stress you out. Download Recover It today for free and get your peace of mind back. Link in the description below. So first we're gonna be starting with OpenMU, which is probably the first emulator front end that you want to install. It allows you to play dozens of different game console systems on your Mac, all the way from Atari and MAME arcade systems to the GameCube. So OpenMU systems are really easy to use on Mac OS. You just drag and drop, and then it'll be added to your library. And it means that we can easily get titles like The Secret of Mana from the Super Nintendo working really easily in a window on a Mac. However, OpenMU has not received any substantial updates over the last few years. It's still an Intel application running through Rosetta too. And if you wanted to play something a little bit more advanced, then you could try the PlayStation 1 emulated Duck Station, which is fantastic. This now comes with a metal renderer, making it optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac. And we can take older titles like Tomb Raider and force it to go into 16x9 widescreen and play this at 4K resolution. There's also a cool option, which isn't available in other emulators called PGXP Geometry Correction, which helps to remove some of the wibbliness of the graphics. Although some people might want to keep this turned off as it helps retain the charm of the original PlayStation 1 rendering engine. And next we are looking at PlayStation 2 emulation via PCSX2. So we used to have a native ARM PS2 emulator called Ether SX2. However, that project's been abandoned. And in its stead, PCSX2, which has been around for a really long time, has been getting huge amounts of development on the Mac. This is a properly open source project with a lot of progress made on things like its metal renderer. And even though it's still an Intel application that runs through Rosetta 2, it runs fantastically on the Apple Silicon Mac, especially the M4 Mac Mini. Here we can crank up the settings on virtually all of these PlayStation 2 games up to 4K. However, very demanding titles like of the Colossus struggle to hit 60 FPS at 4K and turning this down to 1080p resolution still makes the game look really good and allows us to hit that 60 FPS mark much more consistently. So next up, we're looking at 3DS emulation using something called Lime 3DS, which is a successor project to Citra, which shut down earlier this year. Here we're running the game Shin Megami Tensai 4 at 5x native resolution at 1200p, easily hitting that 60 FPS on the M4 Mac Mini. Here we're testing out the game Nano Assault, a lesser known twin stick shooter for the 3DS. Here we've turned down the resolution very slightly to 4x native resolution, and this is hitting solid 60 at 960p. So anyway, even though Citra was shut down, development still continues continues with Lime 3DS, which is great to see on the Mac. So next we're looking at PSP emulation using PPSSPP. So this is easily one of the most optimized emulators for the Mac. It has a great user interface and it's very easy to use. We can easily crank up the settings for games like God of War Ghost of Sparta to 4K, and it doesn't break a sweat at all running on the M4 Mac Mini at a constant 60 FPS. Other titles like GTA Liberty City Stories also work great. However, a lot of games from this PSP era were locked to 30 FPS. Some games have cheats and patches where you can patch them to 60 fps but i couldn't get it to work on this particular game 
So next we're looking at Wii and GameCube emulation via the excellent emulator called Dolphin. The original hardware could only play this at 30 FPS, but by using and applying a cheat code for 60 FPS, you can unlock 60 frames per second and also run this Wii game at 4K resolution, looking and playing far better than it did on the original Wii. Similarly, more demanding titles like Auto Modelista, the racing game, can be forced to run in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And playing this game 22 years after its first release at 4K 60, the game still looks looks amazing thanks to its timeless cell shaded graphics. So next up, we're looking at Xenia, which is Xbox 360 emulation. So this recently became available thanks to AVX support added in macOS Sequoia, and we're actually running the Xenia emulator through Crossover. If you want to find out how to do this yourself, follow the link in the description. So performance isn't amazing, but you have to consider the fact that this is an emulator targeting the Windows platform, and we're actually running this through a Wine translation layer. Plus, it's also being translated through Rosetta 2. If we ever manage to get proper Xenia support on macOS, then I'm sure that performance would be a lot better. Next, we're testing out PlayStation 3 emulation using the new native ARM version of RPCS3. So this is Skate 3 running at 720p and we're getting 50 to 60 FPS. So in general, you're gonna see pretty substantial improvements over the old Intel version running through Rosetta 2. Games like Demon's Souls work really well at 720p hitting that 60 frames per second on the M4 Mac Mini. Make sure to apply the fixes that are listed on the RPCS3 wiki. And some games also work really well at high resolution. So this is Tekken Tag Tournament 2 playing at 4K resolution, easily hitting that 4K 60 FPS. So next up, we are looking at PlayStation 4 emulation on the Mac for the very first time. So Shad PS4 is in very early development and really it's targeting Windows as the main platform. Mac OS is kind of an afterthought. Only one member of the Shad PS4 team actually owns a Mac. So it's quite amazing that we have this in the first place. So at the time of recording, in order to run Shad PS4, you needed to download the Mac OS QT version and then replace the Molten VK DY lib with the latest artifact version. However, now that's not completely necessary. Just be aware that performance is still very lackluster and there's a lot of graphical issues at the moment. What I found is that especially running on the M3 and the M4 chipsets, we have a lot more graphical issues and a lot less stability. Playing on the M4 chip results in a crash every few minutes, so don't expect too much. However, it is super cool to see that the beginnings of PlayStation 4 emulation have finally come to the Apple Silicon Mac. Definitely watch this space. I've actually since been doing some experimentation playing Bloodborne on my N1 Max chip and it actually works surprisingly well. However, I'm a bit unsure about whether I should be doing a PlayStation 4 on Mac emulation tutorial as it's still in very early stages. If you do want me to make a tutorial video on how to get this to work, make sure to leave a comment. If I get enough feedback, then I'll make that video. Next, we're looking at Nintendo Switch emulation via Ryujinx. So yes, Ryujinx was shut down, but the project has been picked up in particular by one user called GreamDev, who is still releasing updates for this emulator. And this runs fantastically on Apple Silicon hardware. That's because the games are being virtualized rather than being emulated. Here we're playing the game Sifu at 60 FPS. Next, we're also looking at Red Dead Redemption 1, which for a long time was the best way to play this game on a Mac. Here we're running with VSync turned off on docked mode and we're getting about 60 plus FPS. However, we can actually run the recently released PC port of Red Dead Redemption 1 on the Mac here we're running at 1080p on the medium graphics preset. Just be aware that you have to be running the DRM-free version of this game and we're playing through crossover, easily hitting about 60 to 80 FPS. And I think the graphics look a lot better than the Switch version of the game. If you want to find out how to do this yourself, I'll leave a link in the description. So lastly, we're looking at a really cool project to integrate Metal into the Wii U emulator called Simu. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link to this in the description. It basically replaces the Molten VK renderer with a direct Metal one, resulting in much better performance. Basic 2D platformers like Shantai Half Genie Hero work great, which is absolutely to be expected. More complex titles like Bayonetta 2 also perform really well, but I'm sure most of you are here to see this particular game, which I'm not going to name because I don't want to get copyright striked again. And this game performs much better due to the fact that it can perform asynchronous shader compilations, so there's none of that stuttering, and we're getting a very decent 25 to 30 FPS. Even playing in the open world, we're still getting decent frame rates with barely any kind of actual stuttering. And here I'm comparing it with the standard build using Molten VK and there is a pretty huge difference. Yes, there is stutter every time a shader is compiled, but general frame rates also seem to be much lower. You see this a bit more clearly when I compare the game side by side. The majority of the performance difference is really coming from the asynchronous shader compilation, which to be fair, takes quite a long time to do 
in this particular game. The developer of the backend actually made a comment on my last live stream as well. They've stated that the difference in performance is probably only about 20% when you discount shader compilation stuttering. If you want to find out how to do this yourself, I will be making a video tutorial on this, but I'll also leave a link to the branch for the metal version of Simu and also how to actually submit contributions and test out more metal games. So anyway, that's my overview of emulating games on the M4 Mac Mini. It is a very capable gaming device and the support for game console emulation is improving over time with all of these really exciting developments. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.